All right, this one last midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. So last week, System Era put out their Xenobiology update for Astroneer, and wow, is it fun. One of the biggest changes for this update is that Astroneer is now available on Nintendo Switch. While I don't have Nintendo Switch myself, I heard it's running really well and people are enjoying playing Astroneer on Nintendo Switch. Another large part of this update was the introduction to Galastropods, or AKA Space Snails. Now the Space Snails are super useful and extremely fun doing the missions to get the Space Snails. I'm not gonna go ahead and spoil the missions. I'm sure there's other people out there that have already done complete walkthroughs, though I find it absolutely unnecessary. The starting mission is called Bait and Switch, where you have to get several pieces of Sphalerite, and from there, the mission's guide pretty much walks you through the entire rest of the process. Reading the lore will help you understand exactly what's going on and what you should be doing to gather these Galastropods or the Space Snails. The other thing to pay attention to is inside of the mission log when it's telling you to scan the shells, if you read the description, it'll tell you the exact location of where to find the shell. From there on out, it's just a matter of following the mission logs. I found it self-explanatory. There's a couple little interesting gotchas throughout the process. And like I said, I don't want to spoil it for you because I found it a lot of fun. Starting a brand new game and just doing missions that are related to the Galastropods, it took me roughly about 10 hours to complete. I did also play with a pre-existing save and I was able to complete all the Glastropod missions within about three hours. We also did a multiplayer mission where we were able to get it done in about an hour and a half on an existing save. Again, the snails are super useful. I'm really impressed with the buffs that each one of these snails give you. Feeding a snail a seed, and you can feed them any type of seed, but they also have a favorite seed in which they enjoy. And the benefits are the length of time that it takes the effect to wear off. So if you feed them just any kind of seed, you get 10 minutes of that particular buff. If you feed them the seed that they're looking for, you get about 30 minutes of that particular buff. Now, I didn't time each one of these. I don't know if they are varying different lengths of time for each one of the snails but the one for Silva did give me those numbers that I just quoted. Sylvie, the Silva snail, greatly illuminates an area. And man, you're talking about greatly illuminates an area. This is a huge amount of light. I love this snail. I wish I could have like a hundred of them because this would be a great way to light up any base or any cave. Usagi, or the DeSolo snail, will give you tracking points inside of your compass to the nearest valuable curiosity. And this is really neat to help you find either down satellites or down ships or other interesting things on a planet. Stilgar, the Kalidor snail, gives you oxygen. Oh man, and it also fills up tether networks. So you could have some tethers that don't have oxygen provided to it and it'll fill it up. It's almost like you become an oxygen providing resource. like a ship or a base piece that happens to have an oxygenator associated to it. Or you can put it on a platform and allow it to provide oxygen to connected, you know, platforms or tether lines. Princess, the Vesania snail, gives you invulnerability. I mean, you don't take damage from anything aside for suffocation. So, you know, as long as you've got oxygen on you, you're breathing, or maybe you're using Stilgar to help you breathe, you don't take any damage. So you can jump off of uh, the peaks, the tallest peaks. You can go next to plants that explode or give some sort of damage normally, and then you're not taking any damage. This is a really cool snail. Rogel, the novice snail, gives you a significant amount of power. Now... I don't know that it's significant. I clocked it at six units of power per second, which is, you know, not that great, but it's nice to have, especially if you're off starting a new base. So think about taking Rogel with you when you're, you know, starting a new base location and you're struggling for that initial power, but don't expect it to power your entire base. Bestifar, Glacio Snail, 
essentially gives you the ability to have kind of like a wide, a boost, and a drill mod all attached to your terrain tool. So you attach him to your terrain tool and he acts like those three units without consuming a bunch of power. Another really useful snail to have with you. And finally, Inoki, which is Aatrox's snail, gives you uh, increased jump height, sprint ability, and reduces the movement speed penalty when carrying heavy objects. This is a great snail if you want to get from point A to point B a lot faster inside of Astroneer. Again, all of these snails don't have to be fed their specific or their favorite food. You can feed them any seed. And talking about feeding them seeds, this is where the automated farms come in. And you can set up one of these very quickly with just a couple of auto arms and some storage and some power and produce all the seeds you might possibly need. Of course, these plants are all over the place. They're not that hard to find to begin with. And so getting seeds, at least the basic seeds, are pretty easy. But if you want to farm those specific favorite food type of seeds, that's pretty easy to do too. As I said earlier, make sure that you read the lore about the snails. And, you know, on top of that, this update introduced lore. So imagine what could possibly be coming in the future since we ha now have a mechanism that allows for lore within the game. Once you acquire the snails, they're permanent to your character for that particular save. So you can be on another planet, and as long as you have a landing pad or access to the missions log, you can recall that snail to that specific location whenever you want. In the update, there were several bug fixes, and one of the major bug fixes that was introduced was the sticky terrain bug fix. Now, I don't know that you maybe have experienced or not, but sometimes when you're running around on a planet, you would temporarily get stuck. Just, I mean, it's like a momentary, it's like a split second that you'd be stuck on the terrain, which was super frustrating for those of us who were constantly running around on other planets because it seemed to happen off Silva. That is now fixed. Thank the Lord. Oh! However, there is a catch. Currently, right now, it only works for brand new saves. So you're probably going to have to start a brand new save if you want to get rid of the sticky terrain. Maybe in the future, they'll introduce a patch for old saves. Well, that's about it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Would love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way, you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.